Thank God it's Thursday. The working week is slowly coming to an end and you know what it means. We are coming to you live from digital address DA099. 2539 in Kokumemli, Accra, on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. Our social media handle for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is Joy News on TV. My name is Selina Ampo. And um, let's start our first story. Well, uh, a warrant for the arrest of embattled businessman Nana Apia Mensa has been issued in Accra after his investment company, Men's Gold, failed to refund clients monies. The circuit court, which issued the warrant for the arrest of the CEO of the gold dealership company, said Namwan, as he's popularly called, is wanted for defrauding by false pretense. Pretense. He's also wanted for money laundering. Men's gold has been trending for a while now. Let's go to Facebook and Twitter and get some comments on men's gold. And we have one man army who says, I personally think um, Nana Pia Mensa should be on one of our currency notes. He's bigger than the big six. Hashtag Nam One. Hashtag Men's Gold. So these are some reactions from people after hearing that Nam One is wanted. Um, Nana Jiman also says, Men's Gold customers, pa, what are they trying to tell us? That if we lose our money to super bets, we should do demonstration. Did you know there was a government when you were enjoying? And we have Frederick Kome who says, if a president gives you credibility, what else do you want? Chale, they should stop this damage control. The customers were played and if you want abnormal interest, the risk is higher. It's a game and, and you've been played. Forget about repayment. And this is a Comment coming from Rihanna XOXO who says, What if by now Namwan has done plastic surgery? She's asking, What if by now Namwan has, well, since he's wanted and everybody's looking for him, what if he has done plastic surgery? And Ebutia Pei says, The lawyers Nana Apia means that Namwan needs. And these are images of lawyers from the very interesting uh, popular series Suits. And Samuel also comes with, um, this shows that Ghana is a lawless state where anybody can toy with people and the economy. The government and its state institutions just allow anything to tr thrive and become monstrous and the very, at the very notice of government and implementing institutions. This type of inertia is corruption and crimin uh, criminal negligence. It goes on and on and on and on. And he comes to say that is... The mandate given to government and its agencies and any one of them who fails has betrayed the people's trust. So stop castigating the people for doing business with men's gold. The government and its agencies failed in their work. And Moon Kaila says, Nam One will be remembered for a long time to come. The, G, the greatest of all time among scammers. And Kwesi Adoko says, Ghana, I get the dead day. Yeah, Nam one, Nam one everywhere, ain't it? Ghana, I get the dead day. Well, that's some comments coming from Facebook and Twitter of Nana Pia Mensa. And he's also trending on Twitter. I think he's number two on Twitter so if you want to check that out go to Twitter you see Nana Pia Mensa there or Nam One. Nam One is also um, trending. Let's read some of the tweets. We have Sultan Abu who says a decider gave us Prince Kofi Amwabing of UT and Nana Pia Mensa Nam One of Men's Gold. All hail Santa Clausians with some litty emojis over there. You do all. And Eugene, who says, one man destabilized the banking and financial industry as a whole. Nana Pia Mensa, men's gold, never forgotten. Mm -hmm. 
And Nana Prepper comes with I stand for Nana Pia Mensa with some emojis right there. Okay. So we'll be opening our phone lines. Our numbers are 0302 211 6912. 0302 211 6912. Give us a call and give us some reactions. We want to find out your opinions about um, Nanapia has been called. He's been wanted. He's wanted, in fact. Um, there's an issuance of his arrest. What are your thoughts or what's your take on it? Give us a call. The number again is 0302 211 Six nine one or two, and we'll keep your comments coming on all our social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The handle is Joy News on TV. Away from that, let's talk about marriage. We all know marriage is a sacred union, but what happens when you marry someone who only married you for ulterior reasons? Like someone gets married to you basically because he or she wanted to get a green card. So our question is, will you marry someone just for a green card? Let's head on to Facebook to read some of the comments that people gave. Uh, we have Marcus Asari who says, why not when there is unbearable hardship here in Ghana? Indeed, let me advertise myself here. I'm available for any woman from abroad to come and take for free. Sebastian Slinky says, I just love my country. Nothing moves me to move abroad. And Kwabna says, I will give myself away. Kwabna is offering himself. He says he's giving himself away. Ladies abroad. And Ibrahim says, there should be, there should be first the commitment of love before marriage so he's saying before you get married you should love the person frederick omar Epp says sharp cra sharp the sharpest newton also says anything under this condition will never last peter akum bobe says this format is not supportive anymore if you marry, whether for love or green card, it's subject to renewal with respect to the stage of the marriage. And Abdel, who says, why not? He's asking, why not? Why wouldn't I do that? Marcus Asari says, why not when there's unbearable hardship here in Ghana? Indeed, let me advertise myself here. I'm available for any woman. Well, let's hop on to the phone lines. We have some callers. I have Fatal Haifu from Wa. Hello, Fatal. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I am fine. What about you? I'm amazing. Fatal, number one yes. is wanted. You, yeah, number one is wanted. Yes. What are your yeah, thoughts on that? Um, I, I really wanted to find out um, what somebody mentioned about the property, how they are going to refund people. Mm. So I was saying, so are we also going to, you know, he was initially sponsoring Stoneboy, Shatawali, and then the other artists and celebrities. Yeah. So properties given to them are also going to be taken in order to settle people or what? That's what I want to know. So you want to find out are the properties of the... Um... Yeah, the Stoneboy, this one, and then Shatawali, and then the others, including the Zaliko media itself. Mm, mm, um, mm. Are they going to be taking... So that they can maybe either sell so that they can get liquid cash to settle, I mean, customers. That's what I want to find That's out. That's what you want to find out from them? Yeah, okay. that's what I want okay. to find out. Thank you very much. Fatal Haifu from Wa. We also have Richard Aqua from Oboise on the line. Hello, Richard. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm great. Thank you. I'm amazing. Uh, Richard, Nana Apia Menta is wanted. Um, what's your reaction to the news when you heard that there's an there's an issuance of his arrest, a warrant for his arrest? Um, very sad. You were sad? Very, very sad. Why were uh, you sad? Very sad sometimes. Just imagine yourself being born in a nation like this. 
the, uh, uh, in a nation where institutions are not being effective, okay, where we just sit down, put our arms for, for things to go wrong, and we come back and, and, and start the same game. Mm. Where were the, the institutions that were supposed to, to manage uh, uh, the financial sector? Bank of Ghana only came to one. The Three Justice Commission only came to one. Wouldn't they have done something more serious than and just warning customers? You now, innocent people would always want to um, do something with their money. And um, it's like, everybody just sits down, watches. It's like, we are in a nation where anybody can just wake up, toy with our hearts, and then then, then just go away. Okay? How can this man leave this country without a tree? Are we, are we serious as a country? Everybody does anything at all in this country. I mean, like, once people get some small money, they just, I was watching your, your, your program earlier on. Just look at how he insulted the lie for trying to trying to bring some issues to the lamb life. Okay? The way people really, um, and I think there's a problem with the way we also celebrate rich mm. people in this country. The culture of, the culture of, uh, of, 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 of celebrating uh, uh, the rich in this country is too much that like everybody wants to amass wealth at the expense of ordinary Ghanaians. Okay? I mean, it's very sad. It's very sad sometimes to yeah. hear things like this. All right. Now, people are. Thank you very much, Richard Aqua from Obwasi. You heard him right there. We also have Danekia from Sunyani on the line. Danekia, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine, and you? I'm fine, thank you too. Danekia, what are your thoughts on the Namwan um, arrest, um, warrant for his arrest? Oh, we just lost Danekia right there you can keep your comments coming on all our social media platforms it's join news on tv you can still call in our phone lines and we are going back to facebook to read more comments on the topic we have on board and we have we have marcus Asari who says why not when there's an unbearable hardship here in ghana indeed let me advertise myself here um, available for any woman from abroad to come and take for free. And we have Bismarck Sebastian Slinky who says, I just love my country. Nothing moves me to move abroad. Well, we have Alaji Yusuf Ahmed on the line from Makati here on the line. And let's. He Hello, Alaji. Good morning. How are you? Fine, madam. Okay. Alaji, share with us what's your thoughts on Namwan's, the issuance of the warrant for Namwan's arrest? You see, sometimes people. Fine. Sometimes people. Hello? Yeah. Sometimes people make certain mistakes, uh, certain statements you cannot understand. Okay. All over the world, these people are respected. All over the world, I said. Sometimes people make certain mistakes and they come on air and say anything at all. All over the world, people are respected. Rich people are respected, not in Ghana alone. All over the world. What, what do you mean by you that, understand? sir? <laughs> Uh, people are saying, uh, uh, we, we worship uh, uh, rich people here, they are what and what. Nobody is worshipping Apia. Uh, what? Nobody is worshipping Apia. Nobody is worshipping him. The point is, this, there was some years ago, about 10 years ago, somebody published a paper. I will bring it to your office and show it to you that. Ghanaians were warned not to involve themselves in such a thing. Somebody wrote it, I'm the people with me, that Ghanaians were warned to be careful about such, uh, such people. You went there and gave your money to him, and you're not asking the government to go. When, when you were sending the money to did you ask the government that you're sending your money to, to anybody? Mm. But if they've issued a warrant yeah, for his arrest. Because of your greediness, greediness, that has pushed you to such a state. This is go. All right, that was our last caller. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Well, Man City.
beauty has been trending. And here are some tweets of people who watched the match. And we have Kay who says Manchester City are being sued for abuse, rape and pedophile charges for their assault on Burton Albion. There's a tweet coming from Kay. And, and there's a response that says, Guardiola doesn't deserve to go to heaven. And Adam says, Manchester City being 9-0 up against Burton Albion really reminded me of the time when Burton Albion relegated Sunderland to the third tier of English football. And Opata Joe says, Nine, nine Manchester City's 9-0 nine win against Burton Albion is the largest ever margin of victory in the semi-finals of an English, pre English Cup competition. And there's a reply, it says, surely as Man City's 9-0 victory has to be the biggest win in a single game in a semi-final in a major cup competition ever. And Kema says, Manchester City joke too much. A club whose fans think they are bigger than Manchester United can't even fill their stadium on a cup match semi-final. Get your fan base in order before you start thinking of declaring yourself big. And this says, Manchester City were 4-0 up at halftime, but continue to rip apart their league opponents as they run up the biggest margin of victory in an English Cup semi-final. Well, it's time for Throwback Thursday. For today, we are asking, what was the silliest punishment you ever did in senior high school? Um, well, for me, personally, uh, when I was in senior high school, I was punished with some classmates to scrub the street <laughs> with Omo. And we had to walk miles to find what's in a borehole and then pour on the streets and scrub the streets. I'm sure some of you have had some of these memories. Let's go to Facebook to read some comments. And we have Philip who says, we pushed a cart that was drawn on the board. Wow. And Adam Burma comes to the comments, being caught for leaving campus and punished to uproot this big tree. I looked at the tree, sat under, and cried for almost one hour. Then I went for my tools and began the journey of the hardest punishment I've ever done. Honey Morris also says, my science teacher asked me to kneel down on the football pitch, and then he traveled. Three days later, he met me in the classroom and asked me who asked me to stand up. For my punishment, he made me kneel down again at the same place. About an hour later, he saw me kneeling and asked, what am I still doing there? <laughs> Interesting. That's a comment from Hani Morris. And Buama Kweku Boatin says, his punishment was disco weeding. The most memorable one, disco weeding. I'm sure this is a lot of people's most memorable punishment in senior high school. So Obama comes with the comment, some six lashes, Mr. Dodu, my mathematics teacher gave me in junior high, JHS1, ar um, arising from names of talkers that had been written by Eunice Ajiman in his absence. He says, Eunice, I hope you are reading. And we have another one from Honorable Emeritus Maspero. Wow, what a name. He says, um, his most memorable punishment in senior high school was uprooting stumps and digging manhole. And Silas comes with stone scrubbing. You have to use a small stone to whiten the cement, the cement out, the cement floors outdoor. Wow, I'm sure that must have been difficult. And Austin Eliklim counselor says fetching ten bags of sawdust from about one kilometer distance to the school anytime you are late. The show has been Joy News 
interactive with me, Selina Ampo. Bye.